What's going on guys? Um, welcome to my video here. I'm about to make a video and I call this basically a breakdown of uh, comic books. Something along those lines is my first video I'm making. Um, you know, I've seen channels on YouTube. Uh, I think his name is Critical Thinker. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh, you know, but I don't see a lot, a lot more guys like him that review comics and go over comics, talk about comic books and stuff. And uh, I've been collecting, I've been buying comic books basically all my adult life. I love comic books. Superman is my favorite superhero. Um, Dan would be a Batman, uh, Spider-Man, and a um, bunch of others, you know, but those are uh, my main three that, that, that I love. I grew up with them. And um, yeah, I'm sort of, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm artistic and I love the art form of comic books. I love the storytelling. I love the, you know, the, the pencilers, the inkers, the colorists, storytellers. I think the that comic book industry is pretty awesome when it's when it's in the top of their game. And uh, yeah, I you know, I love comic books. I have a a, a fun fun uh, memories of them. I still read them even as an adult that I am now. Um, and I'm about to break down this particular comic book. This is the Superman Annual um, 2003. Unfortunately, I gotta say that, um, you know, comic books nowadays have been, um, for lack of a better term, infiltrated by uh, sort of this um, virtue signaling, um, activist, woke type of uh, approach. And they are sacrificing, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the properties in, in Marvel and DC. Um, those are the two big, big, uh, dominant comic, uh, comic book uh, companies in the market. There's others uh, too, and they're suffering from the same fate. So, let, you know, let me move. Let me move forward and let me break down this comic book over here. This is a beautiful cover. Um, I'm not sure who the artist is from, from a glance. Um, I will say it's a Patrick Gleason cover, but I don't think so. Um, I really can't see a signature on it. And um, there's several artists listed. So this, you know, the, the, the cover not, the, doesn't always match the story within the pages. Um, in this case, it does. What, what we see in the comic book, we see Superman you know, taking center stage, Louis Lane, um, the Parasite, and other characters, supporting characters. Unfortunately, this particular comic book is represents everything that's going bad with comic books right now. Um, and it's weird. It's weird because I know for a fact the writer in this book his name is Joshua Williamson. He's a very good writer. Uh, he had a very successful run in Flash. He's currently writing uh, Superman, and uh, last year I think he wrote the you know the the Crisis uh, crossover book, which uh, overall it was it was pretty good. But over here, um, he does a very big bait and switch um what do i mean by bait and switch well you know let's say this is a young 
Superman fan. A 13 year old kid, 14, and he buys this comic book expecting to see Superman kicking ass and doing superhero stuff. When you open it, yeah, at a glimpse, I think it, it you know, has a little introduction type of, uh, you know, captions introducing you into the story. Um, it's an internal dialogue, the internal dialogue approach. In this case, it is Louis Lane. Uh, internal dialogue going on here and um, as you continue let me see uh, here there's a big splash page which encompasses two pages and it's a pretty good illustration it's Superman fighting Tormund it, uh, you know, according to the dialogue, Superman is fighting Toyman in the current time. That is only alluded to. There's this image. But then as we move on, um, they do the bait and switch. Um, we have Louis Lane at the Daily Planet. Now for the next... 22 pages there's act superman's not actually in the story he's talked about it is implied that he's handling a crisis now mind you this book is six dollars it's 5.99 that's a lot of money nowadays take that into account dc comics that you know Money is hard to come by. So if you buy a Superman annual, which is usually uh, not your regular comic book, they are usually thicker, they have more of a, you know, complete story. It doesn't continue. Annuals usually start and end. You know, you'll be disappointed because... In the next pages, initially, is Louis Lane, and it's a whole bunch of women, bunch of uh, what I call girl bosses, and that's what the story is about. I mean, these girl bosses, this huge girl boss, Louis Lane. Now, Louis Lane is is a great character. She is, you know, part of the Superman mythos for sure. Um, she has held, she has had her own mini series before. She's, she's always been kind of a girl boss. Always since decades before. But this is different. This is different. This is like, this is not only going on in Superman. This is going on in all comic books right now. Where women are written as this arrogant, dominating, man-hating, um, I don't know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, man-hating, um, bitches, you know, uh, it, it's just, it, it's crazy. And the art here, the coloring is pretty good. The art is weird. Now you will notice, and I will point out that women are no longer um, drawn particularly attractive in comic books. Yeah, Louis Lane kind of looks sexy, but you know, the other uh, ladies, in the story, they don't look, they don't look right, you know. It's weird that the art is very weird. But look at the men. This is what is going on in comics right now. Um, masculinity is under attack 
in comic books, in Hollywood too, in movies. But um, in comic books, it is prominent. It is blatant. You can see it. Look at Jimmy Olsen. This is Jimmy Olsen. Does that look like Jimmy Olsen to you? Does he look particularly manly? This bothers me a lot. It's, it's, it's so messed up, you know? Just awful, awful, awful illustration. Look at that haircut. It looks like a like a like a lesbian, like a you know, a lesbian character, a female. This is Steve Lombard. Steve Lombard is a reporter on the Daily Planet, and he's usually known as this, you know, gung ho, manly, bullish type of guy that covers sports. That's what he does. Look at him. Look at him. Does he look particularly manly to you? And then you're going to see that, you know, it's mostly women. It's all women characters. Now, this is a Superman book. And the story is about that. It's about to move on here. Is... It's just talking heads. Women talking, belittling Jimmy Olsen. Look at Jimmy Olsen. Look at that. That's horrible. That is horrible. Illustration of Jimmy Olsen. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, you know, um, a real illustration of what the real, you know, Jimmy Olsen looks like, but that's, that's what they're doing to men right now in comic books. They're making them look gay, feminish, unmanly. Look at Lombard. Look at this. Look at this horrible, horrible illustration. The plot, it is really uninteresting. What kid, boy or girl, would pick up this book and think it's a cool book. Now, comic books is a medium where you don't have to worry about CGI or special effects. You know, comic books is so cool that you can illustrate fantasy, sci-fi, horror, um, superheroes, and just make it grand because it's all hand-drawn. So you could, you know, if you have a good artist, he's going to make, your story look awesome. So I think this is maybe the fifth page. And yeah, what we get is Louis Lane acting like Perry White. She's the boss. She says, go. That's the action. And this, you know. Look at this. So, you know, we move on, we move on. And it's just... Over here, the art. This is another artist. Horrible, horrible art. Look at Jimmy Olsen. At least he looks a little, just a tiny bit, a little bit more like a man now. But it still looks ridiculous. It still looks awful. Superman's in the background. You see, this book should be about Superman fighting Toy Man. Should have been at the start. That's what the, that's what the cover promises. A Superman story but so far this is not a Superman story this is a supporting characters all women story now this is the trend that I want you to look at men are at the servitude of this boss women okay this is Lex Corp and Mercy is in charge right now a Lex Corp because Luthor is in jail now, it came as a surprise to me that, yeah, uh, recently in the storyline, Superman, you know, had to face Parasite. All of a sudden, Parasite is here. Look at that awful, awful illustration. He looks horrible. He looks like a, like a, I don't know, like a 
weird um, alien from space. It's just, and he looks ridiculous. He's smiling. He looks like a Muppet, like a, like a horror Muppet. And he's happy to be a servant. Mind you, this is supposed to be one of the deadliest Superman villains, super villains in Superman's rogue gallery. And he's been made ordinary and he's happy serving Mercy, carrying boxes and doing menial uh, duties and shit like that. It's, it's just weird. Why would Lex Luthor allow a super villain who has been destructive, has killed people before, and is wanted and has, you know, tried to kill Superman thousands of times, be allowed to be, why would Lex Luthor allow him to be there? You know, that's not Lex Luthor's thing. And even Mercy, why would Mercy want to be around this guy? And why would this guy allow himself to be all of a sudden in servitude, like a maid, like a cleaner. So, you know, there's a lot of ridiculous dialogue going on. Boring stuff, boring, annoying uh, storytelling. Then this is supposed to be uh, shocking. There's like a, a little piece of um, parasite that all of a sudden appears, he growls, but then nothing happens. This is another thing that is going on a lot in in in, in, uh, in this storytelling. It's lame. All of a sudden, Mercy um, I don't know generates, makes her arm a mechanical cannon of sorts. It is implied in the story that Mercy is not human. So I don't know where Josh Williamson is going with this story because Mercy has always been very human. And she's been always an accomplished, badass, um, Lex Luthor bodyguard and assistant. Now, in the story, there's, there's a section where uh, I think Cat Grant uh, tells Louis, uh Mercy that why she has always, um, why is she still serving Lex Luthor or something along those lines. It's, it's, it's just, man, weird uh, story. And look at this. Look at this. Something about leave my, you know, this piece of myself alone and he hugs it and this is what the parasite has been reduced to. Like a Muppet. You know, like a Disney character. But more awful art. The coloring, no, the coloring is uh, actually pretty good. So more, um, okay, we get um, some mention of Superman. You see this, like again, this story should be a Superman story. From the beginning, it should have been Superman doing things, fighting crime, fighting the toy man. The conflict should be around Superman, saving people. That's what it should be about. Not about Lewis Lane being the boss of the Daily Planet. And all the boss women, the bossy women that she's surrounded with and they're so good and accomplished and so awesome and all that bullshit. But let me move on. Um, in this particular page, Lombard, a white man, is, you know, he basically tells Lewis that he went to interview Liewire and Liewire refused him. So he just, you know, this accomplished reporter, because for all his flaws, for all his 
ways, he is an accomplished reporter or he wouldn't be in the Daily Planet, I would think. He just went back and, you know, very laid back. He told Lewis that he failed on his assignment and he's not going to try. He's just going to sit it out. And Lewis is like, oh, let me go be the boss and because I'm, I'm bored here and I'm an action junkie. Let me get out of here. I, I'm going to go and take care of uh, the live wire interview. And we move on from there. She goes to jail and more women. You know, it's more women. Women, 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 bosses and um, live wire all of a sudden it's okay and, and giving Louis Lane interviews. They're very shammy, very friendly. Um, this is another character from the Bendis run. Don't get me started on Bendis. And a little fight breaks out because this girl has a, you know, has a bone to pick with Lewis Lane from past experiences and stuff. And Lewis uh, promises Livewire something, uh, some sort of a benefit where she's incarcerated if she helps uh, Lewis, if she protects Lewis against this girl. I forgot her name. Uh, so a lame fight ensues. It's a pretty, pretty lame action sequence. There's, there's Lewis Lane. She, she frees. So these women are all, you know, calling the shots. There's no men in this story. There's no men. Men are not allowed to be in charge anymore. They're not allowed to be jailers or... or um, and if they're around, they're very effeminate men. So it's a, you know, splash page. It's decent. It's not that bad. The action sequences are pretty awful. Pretty awful. I don't know how she can affect this girl because this girl is uh, essentially, she's like a, like a, you know, she can become mist, a red mist. I think that's her name, red mist. So I don't know how a live wire can touch her and electrocute her. That's not explained, by the way. This the story lacks a lot of logic, a lot of it's a lot of uh, stupid stuff that goes on. That is, is it's confusing. It's lazy writing. The way I see it. Um, move on. So. There you go. So Louis Lane gets her way, Livewire protects her, and then she promised Livewire something, and I don't know. It's, it's, again, this is an animal book, a Superman comic book, and it's after 22 pages, he's not there. The story that should be going on is not there. So we get you know, Superman. Now he appears. So Superman took a back seat. The main character takes a back seat to all these women in a very lame storyline where nothing really actually happened. It was just it was just a story where we get all these talking heads, all these women talking and showing that they're bosses and that they're good and they're better than men. That's basically the gist of this. If you read between the lines, you just, you know, you, so I don't know what, and these women are, you know, go around saying that they're good and they're smart and they don't need men. They don't actually come out and say it in, in this particular story, but they allude to it. It is shown that, you know, Jimmy Olsen is ineffective, Steve Lombard is ineffective, and women got to go and do the job. So we move on. Here, the, 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 the art improves a lot. It improves a lot. Superman, I, this is the, the story that should have opened, this book should have opened with. But no, they play second fiddle. So over here, 
here we go. It's Superman and he's, it, again, it's so lazy the writing that when we get to Superman, there's things that have already gone on, but it's really unclear what has gone on. And, and this girl is talking to Superman. She's monitoring Superman and she's talking to him. It is not clear in the panels how she's talking to him. Is Superman hearing her with his super hearing? I'm not sure. Is he wearing some kind of uh, ear earplug where he can hear her? It is not clear that, that you see, the dialogue doesn't say it and there's no pictures to imply how he is hearing her because he's far away from her. She's in a remote place, Superman is somewhere else. And why would Superman need her help to find somebody, to find Toy Man or to find anyone? Why? When Superman can be the ultimate tracker, he has super hearing, super smell, super sight, x-ray vision, um, he can hear heartbeats, from space, he, I mean, it's, it's stupid. Oh no, but we gotta have a girl helping Superman, you know? So Superman ain't super anymore. He's, you know, he needs women to guide him around. Ah, look at that. I have heard terrible things about this writer. Holy shit. I would never buy this. So here we are, Toyman. That's Toyman. He's a classic Superman villain. Or, you know, it is unclear how, but uh, Toyman is all of a sudden useless and he has been beaten and humiliated by another pair of villains that have a, you know, so, you know, my point is men are under attack in these comic books. Men are stupid, ineffective, even the, even the villains, even the super villains, they are awfully written. They are idiots. They're easily beaten. And not even by Superman, but by, you know, it is, it's just very contrived writing. It is, it is lazy writing. The art is pretty good here. The art is pretty good. But here we got more, more loose lane. This is a, this should have been, you know, you should have seen a loose lane animal. You should have put loose lane in the middle and why the why the the the, the bait and switch? It is so stupid and, and and you know, comic books are too expensive to fool the audience like this, in my opinion. I don't know where this guy comes from, but he's like a Jim Gordon type guy in metropolis he's weird I don't, i'm not i'm not sure if he's like a trans man or he acts gay he dresses gay it's weird it's it's just weird stuff and and, and again you know it's just weird stuff man there's some action going on again the art in this particular second half of the book is, is pretty good but but again let's go back I mean again Superman disappears again you see there was a little bit of Superman here a little bit one page and then he's gone and then he's gone he's gone he's not there it's Louis Lane in some action sequence with other with ordinary cops. More ads. Um, and 
then we get this character, another female character, giving the spotlight. So no, 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 no Superman, it's, it's more women. This is some lame character. And the action is so, I don't know, man. It's just, what a lame, lame, lame ass book. There you go. This is the woman show. This is the woman show. Oh, you hear that the art goes back to awful? Look at this. Jimmy Olsen is in love with the silver banshee. Another thing is that silver banshee, um, the parasite, toy man, they have become lame as fuck, ordinary. They are no longer allowed to be super villains or evil. They are either they have mental problems social problems or they're trying to be as ordinary as they can be they just want to be ordinary you see because comic books gotta be real the writers nowadays are inserting political views and and, and you know they want to incorporate what's going on in the real world inside comic books when it should be you know comic books is is a art form is it escapism is entertainment i do not buy nobody buys a superman comic book to you know so it can mirror what's going on in the real world right now or to see super villains become super wimps splash page with superman here Again, it's, it looks like Superman cannot appear now without Louis Lane being there. You see, and then Louis Lane leads around Superman. There's even a line where, look at this, where Superman says, yeah, you want me to read all these documents for you real quick with my super speed? And she's like, no, 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 I already did it. Something along those lines. And, you know, my guess is this, and she's doing the tech, she's Batman all of a sudden. And then, Look at this. Look at this. Of course I was right. You see, this is, to me, this is lazy writing. It is, it is just, it is just um, preposterous. It is stupid. It is insulting. Imagine, think of all the accomplished women in the world. Um, you know? They don't go around saying, of course I was right, of course I'm better than you, of course, of course, of course, I'm the badass and you're not. So over here I was shocked. This, this, I'm shocked. This is Lobo. This is another Superman villain. Lobo is more of an anti-hero. He has been a hero, but when it comes to Superman, he doesn't like Superman. In this splash page, Lobo all of a sudden is trapped. Look how he's trapped. I don't know how you can hold Lobo. Lobo is basically a Superman level threat. He has super strength. He's, he's as strong as the Hulk. Think of him like that. Um, he can survive in space. He's partly invulnerable. He's a savage savage brutal fighter tactician and he's been trapped by this too guys yeah these are two new villains that i think joshua williamson uh created if i'm not mistaken and they're doing something they want lobo's blood and lobo's just talking and he's helpless and he's saying stupid nonsense and um And the next sequence is just, you know, stupid. They, uh, they want, 
how how do you inject lobo lobo has impervious skin you cannot just you know inject them with a with a syringe just like that and pull out his blood look how he's strapped he's, he's not how is he how is lobo immovable this is a guy that has gone toe to toe with green lanterns with superman himself with chasam with this is he's a heavyweight he's a heavy hitter you know he is very very powerful and smart you don't trap lobo like this but again in this book the super villains are super wimps they're lame they have become idiots easily overcome and not only are they easily overcome it happens behind the scenes when we get to this page which they are no longer numbered i guess i guess that's too old-fashioned to number pages now anyways you know he's just there how do you, how did they trap him I, i'm not sure is there a story that went on before the animal maybe there is and i missed it and, and whatever anyways lobo is trapped and these two villains wanted to want his blood and there's this splash page where there's a whole bunch of sornians because lobo is a sornian now in, it is canon that lobo is so evil and destructive that he wanted to be the only sornian in the universe and he destroyed his home planet and killed all the population of his planet that is canon as far as i know i don't know if it down or dc i guess is is saying that that's no longer the case in the next page here brainiac another superman villain discloses that he has sarnia miniaturized like Candor, the bottle city, he has that. And and Brainiac is also now Brainiac is a collector. He's a cold soulless collector of worlds. So he's done this before with other things and planets and species. But now he's not only doing it because he wants to collect, he's like he feels lonely. Like this animal basically just you know destroy the reputation of Rainiac, Lobo, Toyman and the Parasite and made them stupid idiots. Bottom line, that's what happened. Well, have you seen Superman in the pages I, I just displayed? There's no Superman in this book except for some splash pages and, and some talkative crap where he's Clark Kent. And that's it. This Superman book is the most awful comic book I read in modern times. It is lazy and it's clear that, because Josh Williamson has proven to be talented, but I'm guessing that editorial, the editor is probably the, the, the the real supervillain of this book. And there's a mandate. There's a mandate in comic books that women have to be shown as better and more efficient and smarter and louder and more effective than the superheroes, the supervillains. As long as they're males, they gotta be idiots. If they're females, no there's no, they're no longer they're no longer allowed to be idiots women or evil it is just preposterous a preposterous book the only redeeming part is the superman part and as far as the art is concerned that's a pretty good shot right there it looks like christopher reeve but, you know, it's just the most awful, awful book. And my point is, I don't want to end on a negative note. 
I do this because, you know, he's my favorite superhero. And these books are not cheap, man. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. This is not an isolated thing. I wish it would be an isolated. Oh, it just happened in that. I don't know. Something went wrong. No. This is going on in all DC comics. There's some jewels out there. For example, Mark Way is doing some excellent work. He came out with Superman, The Last Days of Lex Luthor. Now, that's a book. That's a Superman book. I recommend that. But this, this is awful. This is just a slap on the face. This is not really a Superman book. This is just the destruction of Superman villains, of, of supervillains. And, you know, the elevation of, of women and how they all must be superior and must take center stage and be bosses and be smarter and be, and just, just because for the hell of it. Men are basically humiliated, the male characters are humiliated just through sheer illustrations. You know, what they did to Steel Lombard, what they did to Jimmy Olsen, look at that, bro, that's just, It is, look, look at that, look at that. What is that? <laughs> why, is he, why are his eyes black? Cat Grant is old now. She used to be beautiful and sexy. She's old now. And flabby. You see? And the humor is like very stupid humor. It's just, it's just crazy shit going on, crazy shit. You know, but I do. I'm, I'm, I broke down this particular comic book because I want to show what's going on with it. What's going? What I think is wrong with comic books today. There's, they're being politicized. There's some kind of weird mandate going on right now in Hollywood. And this girl power trip thing going on, it goes deep, it goes deep. I've been observing it and I'm gonna talk about it in other, in other uh, videos that I plan to make. But this is, you know, hopefully I didn't ramble too much and, and maybe uh, if, you did, if, I, if you didn't understand my message, I apologize. I'll try to get better at this. But uh, that's what it is. Uh, my first comic book breakdown. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, the, my rant. And um, I love comic books. And my rant came because, because I care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't rant about it. I wouldn't talk about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make the video. So thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, give me likes, dislikes, and uh, let me know what you think. Or what's going on in comic books today am i full of shit or, or am i seeing things there's you know i'm seeing things that i can't unsee now and it's because other youtubers are maybe aware of it but no 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 i you know i i buy these books i bought this book thinking that i would get a great superman story you saw i broke it down you saw it there's 22 pages of, of nothing, but all these this women doing boring stuff. Because when kids buy a Superman book, they wanna see a Superman movie, basically, where he's fighting the bad guys and fantastical action is going on with him saving the day, him. If you want Lewis Lane to be a badass, then you know make a Lewis Lane book. See how that sells. But no, you know it won't sell, so you do a bait and switch. That bait and switch thing, that's insulting to the fans, and you're making those fans spend that their hard-earned money on shit. 
Anyways, guys, thank you. Peace.